Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and today we're in the greenhouse because I want to do some propagation work and today we're going to propagate both an allium and a hyacinth and we're going to use the chipping method. Now I've used this method before, I've used it last year to propagate some hippiastrums and also I have propagated and set a with a propagation method that I really think can only be described as chipping. Anyway, today we're going to do it a little bit different, so let's see how it's done. And here I am with both an allium and a hyacinth, and we are going to make lots and lots of babies. Now, you may well be asking yourself, why go to all this bother? Why don't you just buy your hyacinths or buy your alliums or grow them from seed indeed? And the truth is that really, while hyacinths and alliums are generally quite cheap, it can be that there's a particular cultivar, a particular variety that you really love and can't get anymore. And for that reason, you're going to try and propagate the existing bulbs. Because when you propagate vegetatively, like we're going to do today, then you get an exact replica of the parent. It's not like when you propagate from seed, when you could get a variety of different seedlings that all look a little bit like the parent, but not exactly. With vegetative propagation, we're going to get exactly what the parent is. And for this operation today we don't need a lot of equipment. We have a sterilised knife that's been put into this fungicide. We're going to use the fungicide on the bulbs in a short while. We've got our bulbs and we have just a glove so that I don't have to put my hands into the fungicide. So first off what we need to do is remove all outer skins on our firm clean bulbs and it's very important for this operation to choose non-virus bulbs that are in really good health and nice and firm. This one looks just like a garlic head doesn't it? And again with the hyacinth just make sure that all the skins come off and then what we're going to do is quite radically We're going to take our knife and cut off the top of the bulb, like this, the growing tip. Now, there we go. And likewise with the allium. It's like chopping vegetables, isn't it? Clean across and also to remove the roots. Now the allium has a number of roots so we're going to take them off but we're going to be careful not to damage the basal plate because the basal plate is where all the action is coming from in this type of propagation and for these plants so we are going to be careful not to damage it. And I've just fetched a secateurs to just cut off all those roots. Now it's not a clean secateurs, but we're going to dunk this in the fungicide shortly. So hopefully that'll be enough. Just making sure I have any loose bits off. So that's my allium. And then... Over here, removing all the loose bits, we have the hyacinth. Okay, now the next bit is a bit brutal, so if you're squeamish then you might want to turn away. What we're going to do is we're going to turn these over so the basal plate is presenting like that. And we're now going to... We're now going to cut these, so starting with the hyacinth. I will cut it 
directly in half. I'm going to cut it into segments and we need to make sure that each segment has a portion of the basil plate in it. And that's the first cut. Now here, trying to get them into equal sections. Two. Okay, so that's into four. And the other half of the plant. Now I just want to point out that I see a ring in there of darker material, which isn't necessarily a good sign. But I'm going to go with this at the moment because this is the allium I have. And with this one, I'm going to cut it in half like this. Down the basal plate. And again here. And here. Oh, that was the hyacinth. This one is the allium. And we're actually going to put these all in the same place. So we will cut the allium in half. Okay, so that came quite clean. And here. Cross like that. And this is a smaller bulb, so I think I'm not going to cut it in as small pieces as I did with the hyacinth. So now I'm going to take my segments and just pop them into the fungicide just for a few minutes to make sure that everything is okay. And I don't actually hold out a lot of hope for this hyacinth because of that brown inner section. But we'll pop the bits in here and see what happens. Now what I'm going to do is to just put on this glove to help me remove the pieces from the fungicide and we will take them out. And what I'll do now is to just leave these pieces to dry out for 12 hours and then we will proceed to the next stage in our chipping procedure. And here I am 12 hours later with all my bits and bobs for the next stage in this process. And what I'm now going to do is put some stuff in a plastic bag and it is 10 parts vermiculite and one part water. So let's see this up close. I already have the one part water in here and I'm going to fill up with vermiculite now to 400. Which is about right. And now just kind of, I guess, mix this around a little bit. And now I'm going to put the vermiculite and the water mixture into this plastic bag. And we're going to add our bulbs. So these bits here, in they go. Now, as we mentioned before, the highest in does seem to have some deterioration in its skin, but we'll see if this works. And and I'm rolling the bulbs around in the vermiculite just a little bit to make sure that well, it's kind of even. And when this is nice and full of air, then I'm just going to seal the top with an elastic band. Okay. 
and the next thing I'm going to do with this is put it somewhere dark and warm so that means the house it has to be kept at 20 degrees minimum and within 12 weeks we should see something happening we should see the little bulbils forming in there so let's go indoors and here we are and this is my heat mat where I keep my plants our seedlings nice and warm and here is a box where I'm going to pop my little package in and this way it'll be kept dark and for the warm part then we will just place it on here possibly upside down and hopefully we'll see great things in 12 weeks.